Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to continue our discussion on academic self-efficacy, particularly in terms of reading a text. All right, so reading a text in terms, uh, or reading a book, let's start with reading a book. Reading a book, you start with the beginning, you might skip ahead if you need to, but basically you're starting in the top left-hand corner of every page if you're reading an English text and you're reading from left to right and top to bottom. That's how it goes, and you're doing one thing at a time. That is true for reading books. For reading science texts, sometimes that is not the way to approach it, particularly because in science texts, we, they've actually done studies on chemistry texts and found out that there are more foreign language words to the average reader in a chemistry text than there is in a beginning Spanish text. And so this is not a good way to approach reading a chemistry text. Basically what you want to know is you want to recognize that at least in chemistry there's a foreign language component to chemistry and there's an applied algebra component to chemistry. And so if there's these two components, the foreign language component is going to be a big problem. Because with every science and every actually academic field, there was a language that they use to under, as a shorthand almost, for them to be able to understand complex ideas in short form, okay? In chemistry, we have quite a few of those. And so this foreign language component becomes really hard to get around. Now, the way you're gonna do the chemistry text, at least, is really the best way to do this is to read the objectives If it has objectives at the beginning of the chapter, then read those. It's very quick to read it. It's almost like a chapter outline. Here's what we're going to cover. Then you're going to flip to the back because the back of each chapter has those objectives over again with a summary of what was talked about for each of them. So you're going to read the summary of the objectives. like what was talked about in the chapter um, and what was the important stuff at the back of the chapter. If you still do not have a sense of what the language is talking about, then you can go through the chapter and read the bold parts, read the bolded words. Each of those bolded words is usually defined. So it'll define what we mean by scientific method. It'll define what we mean by unit analysis. Um, and you can go through that way, get a sense of the language, and then get a sense of the math for chemistry. When you're talking about the math, what you're really doing is you're looking at the examples. And the best way to do this is if you have an example that has the problem written out right here, and then the best books tend to have step by step, they'll have step one, oops, that's not step, whoopsie. Step one, step two, and then it works it out as it goes. What you're going to do is you're going to read the problem, maybe look through the first example that's like that in the chapter, and then the next example, you're going to put a piece of paper over the steps, do the problem, and try the steps out. And if you get stuck, you just look at what you've done. Okay, that's probably the best way to go about looking at the examples. And then you can try the back of the chapter problems or the Mastering Chemistry, or online homework in whatever way, shape, or form that's going to be offered in your class, okay? That's probably the best way to do it. Now, if you have someone like me teaching chemistry or teaching your class, then they might very well have videos. And if they have videos, then here's what's happening. We've already read the objectives. We already have decided as professors what we thought was the most important stuff. And we're trying to summarize what the most important stuff is without you having to look at the book that much. So maybe 
if you're particularly lost, you would look at videos that an instructor has made first and then go look at the chapter. It also gives you a sense of the language that's being used. It's almost like watching TV, right? So in terms of looking at a science text, the videos were made because we summed up what we thought was the most important stuff. And then you can go back and look at the chapter. It feels much less like a foreign language text. And you can start to understand some of the pieces and maybe fill in some of the parts that were not as clear in the videos. We also tend to do examples. So you could watch a video on the example problem and then go to the chapter, do what I said about covering up the, the example steps, but reading the problem and trying that on your own. That by far is probably the best way to attack reading a text in STEM. And that's true for science and that's true for math. Any science that is a physical science will have a, a big math component. For biology, it's more about maybe watching some videos, reading the objectives, reading the summary, and going back and defining the terms. And then perhaps applying that in terms of concept maps and such. All right, until next time, I'll see you again.